Committee. Um, I'd just like to uh, apologise for my croakiness and the potential to burst into a coughing fit. Um, I've come well armed, I've got cough sweets and water, so hopefully you'll, we'll get through, but hopefully you'll bear with me. Just a few housekeeping announcements um, we need to make before we proceed. Uh, mobile phones, if I can ask members and members of the public to turn to silence. Uh, microphones, obviously, if the microphone's on, we can hear you and the uh, webcam will follow the microphone. And filming and photography, this meeting will be filmed for live and or subsequent broadcast on the Combined Authorities website. By entering the room, you are also being consenting to being filmed and to possible use of those images and uh, sounds recordings for webcasting and training person. Purposes. If anyone doesn't want to be filmed, then they can, they can leave. Okay, so uh, up to now, uh, can we first start off with apologies for absence? Just to uh, uh, receive apologies from Councillor Tommy Rowe, Councillor Anne McCormack, Councillor Damien O'Connor, and Councillor Alan Reed. Okay, no one else missing that weekend? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. uh, item number two is the uh, declaration of interests. Um, if there is something that comes up during the meeting, which in, sometimes debates go in a different direction than you think, if there's anything you need to declare, either now or during the debate, please make sure you do so, so we uh, follow both government guidelines. Is that okay with everyone? Okay. Uh, the next item I've got is the minutes of the last meeting. And the first question I will ask you all is, can we agree them as a true record of that meeting on that date? Is that agreed by assent? Am I allowed to sign it or is that agreed to sign it? Okay, so there's no alterations to the minutes. I'm just going to slightly alter the agenda around. Um, uh, it's my prerogative to do so. Um, we have statements of petitions and we have public question time. Uh, it's my, my judgment that uh, the petition actually fits in well with one of the questions later on. So I'm going to move to item five, which is um, petitions and statements with, with, with your permission, as the uh, people who've arrived want to formally hand over the petition. Um, so I can welcome Councillor McManus and Councillor uh, and Mr. Murphy. Uh, what's your thoughts, Mr. Murphy? Thank you. Thank you. Brendan, Brendan Murphy. Okay, so this petition is of how many names? Uh, seven, just over seven. And the petition was taken from which areas? Uh, the beautiful, the rock, basically. And the painting library. Okay, all right, that's really good. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah take care of those. So if you yeah. go back to the mic, then you can make your statements following the petition. I put this in good hands. Thank you indeed for that petition. Okay, so we will invite a statement from uh, Councillor Julie McManus. Yes. Okay, thank you, Chair and committee members, for allowing me to address you all today on behalf of residents. The 418 bus route served several communities on the Wirral. It originally began its journey at Eastern Rake into Bromborough, Rockberry, New Ferry into Birkenhead and from there it travelled through Prenton, Arrow Park and the hospital. It's actually known as the hospital bus. It then went to Upton Cross, Upton Station, through the Beechwood, Bitston Village and onto the north end of Birkenhead. Laird Street, Park Station and then into Liverpool. So you can see it covers a huge area. In recent years, um, Arriva have already started to cut back um, and the first part of that service was actually um, dropped with its journey now starting in New Ferry. So already communities on the world have a very reduced service. In addition to that reduced group, the service has a reduced frequency. So it used to run every 30 minutes and now the 418 only runs hourly. With the last bus through the estate towards the depot being half past seven. So no good if you visit a loved one in hospital. Um, and it leaves the estate cut off um, and it, it, as a hospital bus, it's, you know, that, that's your visiting time, isn't it, in the evening, it's next to useless. Um, the estate does suffer from antisocial behaviour 
and residents are very fearful of walking long distances. If anyone knows the Beechwood, it's a very big estate and takes you a long time to walk from one end to the other. So people don't want to walk, especially in dark winter months, which we're now approaching, so it's an awful time to think about stopping the bus service. Um, so that service does help people move around more safely. You can see by the number of petition over 700 that, that Brendan's collected, um, I've signed that petition because it's a desperately needed service and it will be really missed if it's withdrawn. So I ask you to consider that the ward I represent, Bigston and St James, which has just over 7,500 homes, and one part of the ward, the one that we're talking about today, the Beechwood Estate, has over 2,000 households itself. Um, that, that estate only has about 50% car ownership. So how are residents going to get to work or school? How will they visit that loved one in hospital? They'll be left cut off completely. Liverpool City Region as well also has a pledge to be dementia friendly region. So how do you think people with a dementia and their carers are going to get around without a bus service? Bus travels give bus passes give the freedom to travel, reducing social isolation, enabling independence. And our health service is moving to a place-based community. By withdrawing this service, you may as well scrap the bus for many of my bus pass from many of my residents. As a country, we have a goal to reduce our carbon impact to net zero by 2050. Our travel network is supposed to support that goal. Taking out the 418 will have a dramatic impact upon that. So what kind of message are we sending out? We're also told that our travel network will be interconnected so that you're not that far from a bus or train station connection. So for example, if you want to travel to Liverpool, you can get the bus to Upton Station or to Bitston Station and then take the connected train to Liverpool. Take out the 418, you know, which is a, a cross-channel, um, cross-river uh, bus anyway. You failed that promise. Bitston St James is one of the most deprived in the UK. It's amongst the top eight. And as I've already said, 50% are not fortunate enough to have access to a car. And even those that do are struggling to keep them on the road, given the cost of living crisis that we're all living through. I would ask that you seriously consider what a difference it will make by removing this service. Just got one last thing to say, Chair. I've been to a Wirral place-based board meeting this morning. Um, and during, the, um, during that meeting, David McGovern, director of Arrow Park Hospital, told me at that meeting that the, the, the 418 in particular is going to affect the Wirral health care plan. It, it's one strand that identifies how you can get around to different primary care trusts on the world. So the withdrawal of that service is going to have a direct impact. Thank you. Thank you everybody for listening. Okay, thank you very much uh, Julie. And um, Mr Mayor, if you believe you want to make a statement to join the petition as well. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I'd like to thank you, the Chair, the committee members for allowing me the time to address you all today. I have a petition to hand to you, well, we have done, with over 700 signatures. As a professionally trained driver, former bus driver with Arena, I would ask that you seriously reconsider the withdrawal of the 418 bus route. As my noted by my ward councillor, Julie McManus, this is a service that if withdrawn, isolates whole communities, leaving them cut off from the rest of the world. After the 418 leaves Birkenhead bus station by Exmouth Street, Conway Street, it starts picking up senior school children and mothers with toddlers. Uh, these will be young and vulnerable pe people who are being left without transport to get them to home or from school. It continues to pick up people all the way up Park Road North, Laird Street, Ormeet Road, before it turns onto the Beechwood. Before one eight is withdrawn, we will only be left with the Audi 492, which travels from Burnhead into their street, Floaton, and then on to Beechwood, Nocturum, known as the Nocturum Circular. It will not cope with the increased numbers. As with the 418, this is again only an hourly 
good service. It's that beach which stop is just before 7.39 p.m. Christmas time buses are almost non-existent on the two estates. Uh, existent stopping roughly about half past four or so Christmas Eve. Then dependent on how Christmas Day falls, there could be no service for three to four days. This is not for public service. As a former bus driver, I believe it would be worth reconsidering in stating the 419, which is running compatibility with the 418. It would take the same route as the current 418, but extend up to Bent Station, then up to Spiffle Dam, uh, or Spiffle Crossroad, sorry, then Spiffle Dam, and terminate into the Cross Business Park at Bromborough, making it a more profitable service. I'd like to thank the Chair and Committee for allowing me to address you today. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Murphy. Very much appreciated the position and the comments made. Um, I do have the right to reply to, to petitions, but I will reply to the, the question as well from um, uh, Councillor Naomi Graham. So, uh, but just to outline um, the the consultation process was far from perfect. We have an agreement with Arriva. Uh, under the bus alliance to follow a certain protocol for uh, consultation when they are deregistering it is the term that's used which effectively means they no longer want to run a service that wasn't followed my first found out about it from councillor julie mcmanus via uh, a web page that was operating on the beachwood estate to me that is no way to consult the public it just sets panic and, and, and hairs running it doesn't have a logical beginning and doesn't have a logical end thankfully um, Arriva are now back in line with that consultation process and the consultation will extend until uh, January 24. Um, the wider context is that one of the main reasons we want to take buses back into control uh, under the franchise agreement is that these decisions will be made in the open in a proper way uh, and we will consider obviously different factors than a private enterprise in running a bus service uh, and take people into consideration. However, that's not going to solve or help the problem in the very short term, and the onus will be put on us to persuade, I think the first stance must be, persuade Arriva not to withdraw this service, and then build from there. Uh, that will be the first opening position, but I will answer more fully when I come to the, um, the question later on. So thank you once again for the contribution, and that's one of the great functions of this committee, the public can come here and address their concerns. So, Thank you once again. Chair, excuse me, would you allow me to associate myself with Julie's comments and I fully support her petition? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know why I think that's the legal officer. So generally, we, we hear the chair comments and, and we move on. Uh, I mean, to be frankly honest, uh, it would not do the case any harm if, if after the question is asked, um, that I ask you to maybe consider a response asking me to write to Arriva with our uh, agreement. So it might be about the end of the question, that might be a, a valid way to Thanks, Simon, for that. Okay. That be my support boss? Yeah, okay. All right, so we're now going back uh, into the agenda proper, which takes us into uh, our question time. And the first question is from Mrs. Wendell. So it was one in place. 
I moved up to the region, I, um, I used to have a bus service, number X8, they used to go to Chester. They used to be really good, because it was only every 40 minutes, takes 40 minutes to get to Cheshire Road on its route down to Chester, you know, Ellsley Airport and Cheshire Road way. But then, a few years ago, they scrapped it. And now they, they put on, they reintroduced the X1. And the X1, I timed it, it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to get to Cheshire Road. That's double the time the X8 used to do. So, re really the question is, you know, over time and that, why, why have we not got a service that, that could people do like to go to that location and stuff? So why, why don't we have an express bus that goes there? Because an hour and 20 minutes to get to Cheshire Oaks on the X1, that's about the same amount of time as number one service anyway. Okay, uh, it is true, but we used to have a faster X8, which ran separately main service one. When X8 was withdrawn in favour of trying to get more coordinated service there and frequency along the Chester Liverpool corridor, its service replacement became known as the X1. The X1 was still faster than Service 1 as it ran by a new ferry, uh, new ferry bypass instead of the centre of the new ferry. Over time, and since the pandemic, the level of service along the corridor was not financially sustainable and we revised the pattern of service to be what it is today. The X1 now also serves new ferry, but we, keep, we kept that number to save confusion for the vast majority of customers. In truth, the X part of the service is simply part of the service identification, and we could, for example, call it 1A, but that would be likely to confuse customers. I don't think that a fast X8 style route is viable anymore. The corridor has considerable competition uh, from Mersey Rail trains on journey time, frequency and price. And the local bus is successful by being the sum of all its parts, catering for those journeys that cannot be easily made by train. We do have aspirations to improve the frequency of buses on this corridor again, but it is unlikely to happen in the short term. And of course, we would not solve this journey time because of the issues raised in the response. So that's the answer. Thank you, Mr. Weather. And you've got a question for us? Yeah, Weather? I have another question about connecting to St. Helens. So, the bus number 35 from Rivington Road is only twice an hour at, at points of being 24 minutes past and 20 and 24 minutes past and 54 minutes past the hour. Now, if you're going to carry on in St Helens and try and catch the train into Liverpool, the train leaves at 08 and 38 from St Helens Central Station. Then we're talking, what, six to eight minutes on the bus if you're lucky. So and then you've got to walk down and actually cross over to platform two to get the train. It's a very, very tight connection. And the same on, on the return, coming back up. When the trains arrive at 30 and 20, 13 and 43 minutes past the hour, then you've got to try and rush up to the bus stop to get the 35 at, at 18 and 48 minutes past the hour. The connection's not very good. It's very, you're actually having to allow extra half an hour to get home. So why can't we have a more frequency bus service? Or maybe, as they, as they put in the proposal to increase number 10 or 10A, can't they just reboot that on a down, up and down those roads have a more frequent bus service that way? Okay, thanks again, Mr. Reynolds. Um, and the response is, um, Arena Service 35 uh, offers access to links such as schools and hospitals across the route, and any timetable change can impact journey time for all the passengers. To ensure connectivity with the train at St. Helens uh, Central would involve a shift in the timetable by at least 10 minutes in both directions to connect with the train. But the widening impact should be considered to the interchange of both rail interchanges at, uh, in St. Helens, including St. Helens Junction. When proposing any change to service, the wider implications to the network must be considered. However, connectivity between the bus rail is something the LCRA is and wants to improve across the network, and interchange at this location will be considered as part of that process. The 10, 10A service is operated commercially through a quality partnership between Arena and Stagecoach. The operators determine the routes and timetables for this service. The LCRCA works in partnership with the bus operators as part of the Liverpool City Region Bus Alliance, 
and the bus will feed back your suggestion to the operators. Okay. Thanks again, Mr. Wen, for your okay, contribution. Okay, thank you, Mr. No problem. Uh, we move on to Mrs. Fawcett, who is is Mrs. Fawcett here. Okay, so Mr. Someone will read Mrs. Fawcett's question for her. Thank you, Chair. And Liverpool has two tunnels carrying growing numbers of electric cars. I have become increasingly concerned about the ability of most side fire rescue service to deal effectively with a fire in an electric vehicle within these tunnels. This is with regards to the difficulties associated with extinguishing the fire, potential electrocution of firefighters, thermal runway, and the containment of any release of toxic gases. The response I received following an FOI request to Mercy Travel puts all the onus on Mercy Side Fire Rescue Service whom I contacted recently only to be told not to worry, a very senior person would be on hand and would know what to do. I have concerns that NFRS haven't got a coherent workable plan for how they intend to deal with a fire of this type in one of the tunnels, and would be grateful if the committee could explore this on behalf of the thousands of people using the tunnels daily who deserve a safe journey to the Mersey. Okay, uh, an interesting question has been raised. Uh, Many thanks for your inquiry in relation to vehicle uh, fire inside the tunnel. Any incident of this nature would result in a multi-agency response to the Mersey tunnels, with various factors to be considered dependent upon the specific incident. We can reassure you that joint operating protocols exist between Mer Mersey Tunnels Police, our 24-hour combined control centre, and Merseyside Fire Service. Um, I wasn't aware that we, we there were any more danger with the uh, electric vehicle that, than others, but I, I remain to be educated. Um, <laughs> but we have the advantage of a highly trained Mersey Tunnel police force who are highly trained uh, and highly efficient at keeping the tunnels running under any circumstances. So I would pay some credit to them and their performance over many a year. And Mrs. Fawcett has another question. Thank you, Chair. The 75 bus service has become increasingly unreliable in the past few months, with timetable buses frequently missing, leaving large gaps in the service. Could the committee please explore the reasons for this and get it sorted? Okay. Uh, Mersey Travel work closely with the bus operators, part of the Liverpool City Region Bus Alliance, a read that operates the 75 on a purely commercial basis. 75 is not a service we have recently received reliability issue comments on. However, Mersey Travel will discuss the route with Arriva to see if there have been any specific issues along the line of the route which may have impacted on reliability. So um, that's the answer to that one in the absence of Mrs. Forces. So we're now on to the, 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 the final question. Councillor Graham. Thank you. Welcome. Um, councillors and residents of Bebbington, Birkenhead, Bromborough, Crenton and other wards in the Wirral rely heavily on the 418 bus service. Living in areas with some of the lowest car ownership rates in the borough, this bus service is not just a convenience, it's a lifeline. It enables us to get to work, school, hospital and shops. It connects us with family and friends. Removal of essential bus services leave many without affordable or practical transport options. We do understand the budget constraints and operational costs are factors that need consideration. However, we believe that maintaining basic services should be a priority over cost-cutting measures. We have written to Arriva and urged them to reconsider their decision about discontinuing the 418 route. We've asked they keep this vital link running for all those who depend on it daily from students getting to school safely, workers reaching their workplaces on time, elderly people visiting hospitals or shopping centres, or families visiting each other across town. We know LCR are looking at options in the event that Arriva does discontinue this service. Earlier in the year, LCR looked at rerouting the 91, uh, 91A to provide a better service through Crenton. Despite there being a predominantly favourable response and limited impact on budget, unfortunately the change did not go ahead. We thank the authority for 
considering other options. We're aware of the consultation regarding rerouting the 1617. And whilst this might help retain a service through Prenton and some access to Arrow Park Hospital, it comes with issues, including there's no direct service from Prenton Hall Road to Birkenhead, the nearest retail and leisure area. There's no solution for people with poor mobility living in the Boundary Road and Greendale Road of New Ferry and Port Sunlight to get to Arrow Park Hospital. There's no solution for people living in Old Chester Road or side streets of it to get to the hospital. It disadvantages the people who live in Bebbington at Broadway who want to get to Eastham. It limits options for students to get to school, especially to the many schools in Bebbington, without being driven. And it still leaves, as we've heard, many areas between Upton, Beechwood, North Birkenhead, without a direct bus link to the Arrow Park Hospital. So our question is how will the Combined Authority and Transport Committee ensure that residents aren't adversely affected by the potential withdrawal of the 418 and or the rerouting of other bus services? And thank you. City region are looking at several measures to mitigate the proposal, uh, proposed withdrawal and really service 418, including rerouting the 91 and 1617. Uh, Liverpool City region next steps include consultation on any existing supported services such as 16, 17, and 91. The review of supported services will perform part of a wider package of measures that are being considered to ensure that residents retain service provision in Prenton, Bevington from Birkenhead. I really recently extended their consultation period on the 418 to ensure residents had the opportunity to comment on, comment on the proposal. If the decision is taken to withdraw the service, the LTRA will consider and review options out, uh, available and outlined above. I have seen a, look, uh, a series of, of options that are available um, and in the light of Simon Mountley's um, contribution, is it there that I ask permission from uh, this committee uh, to write on all of parties' behalf, uh, asking in the first place that the deregistration of the 418 does not take place, and to ask officers to explore all possible options to uh, maintain good services in the area affected by the 418. Would that be a permissible thing to move?